Hey everyone, Steve from Flight Brothers, and today I am checking out the all-new Foxier Aero FPV camera with the built-in OSD. Now uh, this is a 600 TVL CCD mini FPV camera, and it operates off of the same uh, sensor and same basic uh, hardware of the normal HS 1177. It's the one-third Sony Super HAD2 CCD camera system. So it's got all those same specs, but it's a little bit different case, and it also has that built-in OSD feature that we're going to check out and see what that actually means. So let's get this opened up and see what we got here in the package. Right on top, we've got the directions, and you can see right off the bat, we have in this foam case, we have two different cases here, and I'm going to show you what the difference is to start. First of all, the actual camera in the case that it comes with. This is a slightly different form factor than the HS 1177. It's a little more square and boxy, but it's about the same weight, the same size. I'm sure that it'll fit right in any place where the HS 1177 fits. One thing you notice right off the bat that's a big difference from the HS 1177 is these metal inserts for threading for the mounting screws. This is a great additional feature. Those of you who've used the 1177 know that that just has a plastic hole and a self-tapping screw that goes in there and they're kind of a pain in the butt. But these are a nice metal insert that'll thread the screws in very nicely. So that's a great improvement from the HS1177. The other thing is you notice that this has two screw holes. That's for the different mount version that comes with this that I'll show you in a minute. But if you want to mount this new camera into a traditional HS1177 mount, or maybe you have a frame that already has the side plates for mounting an HS1177, the camera comes with this additional frame. This little uh, frame case here has the standard center screw mount for the HS1177 style mounting brackets. You will have to remove these two screws and remove the lens, <coughs> pull the case out, uh, pull the uh, electronics out of the case, and then remount them inside the back of this additional case in order to do that. We'll see how that works later on, but first, Let's take a look at this camera here. We have a standard 2.8 millimeter lens, which is the most common lens uh, that these cameras have been delivered with, although I have heard that they're starting to uh, deliver these with 2.5 millimeter lenses, which seems to be the kind of go-to lens. A lot of people prefer that over the extra wide 2.1s and the not so wide 2.8. So uh, on the back, <clears throat> you see that we have a six pin connector here and we have the VCC which is the voltage in which this claims to take anywhere from 5 to 22 volts. You have ground, video, audio and then you see two extra pins for OSD and ground. So it appears that this is taking a page out of the run cam book and using two extra pins for the OSD instead of having a four pin connector that you have to unplug and replug and all that, but let's just find out what that looks like. Before we go ahead and plug this in and take a look at the OSD and how that all functions, let's just see what else comes in the package. Got this box from the bottom filled with, I suspect, our cables and mounting hardware. First thing in there is just a standard plastic ring mount. Most of the time these are used to mount the camera in an upside down fashion and the camera hangs from that and uh, <clears throat> can rotate at the angles that you'd prefer. Then we have this new style mounting bracket. <clears throat> This is going to be similar to the Runcam Swift mounting bracket in the sense that it has basically two mounting holes. It has a top mounting hole for the screw that actually holds the camera to the bracket and also this uh, lower slot for the lower screw to go into and allows for the camera to basically pivot at whatever angle you want. So this would go in here and you can see that that pivots along so you can lock it in whatever angle you want to lock it in using that slot and that pivot point. So this is the bracket. Now this bracket feels pretty much about the same 
weight and same gauge as the traditional HS 1177 bracket. So I suspect just like those brackets, this will probably uh, bend out of shape, perhaps break or just be altogether kind of flimsy, just like those uh, HS 1177 brackets are. Uh, but it's functional, it's gonna do its job. So certainly a possibility if you're gonna use the bracket. Uh, also in the package, here's our cabling and <clears throat> OSD uh, control board here. So this is interesting. Um, it's an extra red and black wire here, which I have a suspicion of what that's for, and I'll explain that later. And we have our mounting uh, or wiring here. So we have the uh, traditional Pico blade. Um, six pin connector that would go in the back here and that outputs to a let's see we have there we go your standard uh, three pin like a servo connector for power ground and video like you often see come with these and then there's also an additional green connector if you're going to connect uh, any audio to that it's got that connector there too and then it also on the other end, which is kind of cool, has a, uh, a two-pin connector that uh, will connect into your OSD whenever you want to use it. So this is kind of an interesting way that Foxier is going about it. The only trouble, <laughs> the only kind of problem I see with that is if you use this harness as is, you have the option of plugging in the OSD anytime you want, except in order to do that, you're going to have to leave this big, long, black and white cable attached and ready to use whenever. So you're going to have to tuck that in somewhere, hide it somewhere, and, you know, quite frankly, that just isn't that appealing to me. I'd rather have it just be a separate plug like the run cam. It would make it so much easier, and uh, that's just not how they chose to do it here. So it's a step in the right direction for the OSD cable, but... Uh, not a huge fan of that option. So um, anyway, <clears throat> let's move on. What I'd like to do is go ahead and uh, plug this in, give it some power, and check out the OSD feature. And I'll run down the options you have for monitoring your voltage and uh, how that's going to work. So let's take a look at the actual video quality and the OSD features. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and plug the camera in. This is a not very well charged three cell battery and we'll see what happens. Okay, so it pops up says Fox Ear. There's the Fox Ear name on the bottom. Okay. Flashing. There is the Fox Ear. 3F 11.6 volts showing my voltage and then flashing back to the, I guess it's a um, timer. Interesting. Okay. I am going to go ahead and check the uh, OSD settings here. There we go. So this uh, menu should look very familiar to you if you're used to using the uh, HS1177 has uh, all the normal settings that the HS1177 would normally have. I like to have the wide dynamic range on. White balance, backlight, day night, auto, DPC, oops, uh, all right. Okay, let's see if there's anything new in the special Settings, special, all right, cam title is on, and the cam title it claims is Fox Ear 3 So I'm just wondering maybe if it it's, must be coming up with that cam title by detecting the battery voltage when you first plug it in. I, I'm curious to test that out, so I'm going to plug a two cell into it and see if it tells me something different. So let's give that a shot. I'm going to unplug it. Okay. And I'm going to plug a two cell battery into it. And we'll see if it says two cell with a different title there. Okay. Resetting. 
and now it says two cell 8.2 volts. So it appears as what it's doing for the OSD essentially is just monitoring the voltage when you plug it in and then creating a new name for the camera that is whatever the voltage is of the battery when you plug it in. So then it's just showing the title, the camera title, with the battery voltage right there and then flashing it with a timer back and forth. And unless image adjust, Unless I'm missing something, I don't see any way to make it not flash or change the battery voltage or anything like that. It's just simply creating a title with the data it picks up from the voltage that's coming into the camera and then just flashing it with a flight timer. Oh, now it's staying. Why is it staying? I don't know what I changed. <laughs> Let's see. Special. Well, I don't know. I don't know why it's not flashing now. But I bet if I unplug it and plug it back in, it'll flash again. Let's see. It just resets every time. I'll plug it back into a three cell. And it's resetting. And there it goes, showing me my three cell voltage and it's flashing with the timer again. So essentially it just records the voltage when you plug it in and it sets up a flight timer and your battery voltage on there and it just constantly flashes back and forth. And that's how it determines the battery voltage in the OSD. So I have to admit, this is quite disappointing because I expected this to be an actual, like, functional, exciting OSD built into this camera. And even though it has some things going for it, I forgot to mention the top connector, and I know those metal inserts are pretty awesome, but uh, this OSD built-in feature is practically useless as far as I'm concerned. I don't really care about the flight timer all that much, and I would want to be able to see the battery voltage in real time all the time, not just flashing back and forth like that. So that's kind of disappointing to me. The other thing that's a little bit concerning, and I think there is a way to work around this, but uh, I'll have to show you that in a second, is that the camera gets the voltage from its voltage in source. So in order to monitor your battery voltage, you have to supply straight battery voltage to this camera. The problem with that is that a lot of times supplying direct battery voltage to these cameras can shorten their lives because in essence you're making the camera do more work than it shouldn't have to do if you're powering it with say a regulated 12 volt source. If you're powering it off a of four cell it literally has to regulate that voltage down to 12 volts in order for it to power this properly and if you're powering it off of a lesser source then it has to regulate that voltage up and so powering it directly off the battery has the potential to shorten its life and we all know about the voltage spikes from little bees so if you're running those you also might run the risk of frying this uh, that way unless this has some sort of uh, voltage suppression or something in there that's going to help prevent that from occurring but there is perhaps a workaround I'm unsure so we're going to take a look and find out but according to the directions, if I am reading it right, on the inside of this, in the inside of this, there appears that there may be two pa pads to solder on an actual external voltage. And it even says, when the camera is connected with cam in voltage, it will display cam in voltage. When the camera is connected with external voltage at the same time, that's showing it here, it will display external voltage. The thing is, that must be somewhere behind this 
behind this uh, cover. So I guess we're going to pop the cover off and see if that is something that is actually uh, there and available. And I wanted to uh, switch this to the other case anyway. So let's pull these screws out and see what we find back here. So I guess the idea would be, if this is really what how it works, is that you can power the camera itself off of a regulated source and then you can use this included red and black wire to provide external voltage for the regulation. And yes, indeed, you can see it. I hope you can see it right here and here. Those two little holes there are available for applying external battery voltage and supposedly if we do in fact wire that with the included red and black wire and solder that in there and uh, run it off according to the diagram and the instructions the ground is the one on top and the external voltage is the other way around then uh, that supposedly will uh, allow us to monitor the internal battery voltage now normally a feature like that I would go ahead and try but with this I don't even want to bother because of a few things that I notice right off the bat. One, if I solder this wire in here I have no way to get that wire back out through this case that they provided. The only potential way is to maybe run it through these tiny little slots on the back which are meant for cooling or drill myself another hole into this back plate so that those wires can be fed out. Otherwise there's no other way for them to come out. The other reason I'm not going to bother is because the OSD is essentially worthless to me. So uh, if I'm going to use this camera at all I'm going to just probably turn that off and use an external OSD the way it should be done. While we're looking at this, I will take note that there is a included microphone on the uh, camera and you can even perhaps see in the case there a hole for that to pick up the sound through that microphone and of course on our pad there was that extra green microphone uh, audio wire so it does have the ability to pick up audio if you want to use that which my experience there's only a limited amount of pilots who actually use that feature. Oh, I was going to put, put this in the other case, but uh, you know what? I'm going to wait on that. No point in doing it now. So, an overview here. I, I'm kind of finding it hard to describe my feelings on this. On the one hand, Fox Ear did some things sort of right. The biggest plus to this cam over the uh, other options, like the HS1177, would be those metal inserts on the mounting screws. Fantastic addition. It's going to make mounting this much better. Although I will say, with the plastic HS1177 inserts, you don't have to worry about those screws coming loose because they're so tight going into that plastic. Where with these, you're probably going to want to go ahead and use some Loctite to make sure that those screws stay in and stay where they're supposed to. The other positive thing that Foxier did with this camera is the addition of the extra two wires for the OSD, but they didn't make them a separate connector. So if you want to go ahead and use your OSD, you're going to have to tuck those two extra wires away somewhere so that this plug here is just wadded up somewhere inside your mini quad and then you pull it out when you want to use it with the included OSD board kind of a pain in the butt. Why not just make it a separate connector like Runcam does so you can just plug it in when you want to use it and unplug it when you don't want to use it. Ugh. And the other positive thing that they did is they included an OSD, except it's worthless. If you're going to include an OSD on a camera, it really should be one that's a full telemetry OSD that instead of monitoring voltage itself internally, which is kind of not really a very uh, functional way, I wish this just had a TX and RX input from the flight controller and it could monitor full telemetry. You could get your battery voltage. If you had it, it could get your, your uh, milliamp draw for your current uh, monitoring. It could get your telemetry, it could get your RSSI. If this had a, some sort of a built-in 
proper OSD instead of just this nonsense bot battery voltage that flashes with a timer that's basically worthless for anybody who wants to use it as such. If it had the ability to just tap into the TX and RX ports uh, on a flight controller so that you could get a full telemetry readout on this without having to have an external U uh, OSB chip, that would be something really exciting. Unfortunately, the OSD, included OSD on this camera is just not going to work and Foxier is really going to have to rethink that feature and come up with some way to either update this or just come out with a new product that fixes those issues. Um, mounting bracket is a plus. I think this is a nicer mounting bracket even though it's the same kind of flimsy material with that double screw mount and being able to lock the angle however you want. That's another good feature. It does come with the added case for uh, for different mounting options but uh, overall for the feature that everybody was excited about that OSD uh, they really missed the mark on this one. So sorry it wasn't better news, everybody, but it is what it is. And uh, I hope I've answered your questions on this Foxier Aero FPV camera. And uh, as always, please like, subscribe, share our videos, uh, check out our other videos on our channel, and be looking out for more great reviews and great flight videos from the Flight Brothers. Thanks, everybody, and uh, we'll catch you next time.